All right, here is your Game Sense homework for this week. We're going to be looking at the uh, video of Nick Lidstrom and a lot of his uh, really brilliant shutdown plays uh, on defense. And I, what I want you to do, of course, go to the link from the newsletter where I've linked that, that video on YouTube, watch it, and I want you to take a look at every one of the shutdown plays that he makes and take a look at his feet. Take a look at whether his feet are crossing over or whether he's you know opening up his hip uh to move to the outside on the on the player that he's stopping or whether he's down in a shot block position uh crossing over or whether his feet are, are still and stable and i want you to basically categorize the, the the shutdowns based on those things based on what his feet are doing okay because as you do that and as you start to see the pattern uh, you'll notice what type of footwork leads to successful shutdowns a lot of the time. And then go back to last week, so go to last week's newsletter, and you re-watch some of those one-on-one -on -one dangles, some of those disgusting dangles, and look at what the defenseman's feet are doing in those ones, okay? Are they crossing? Are they opening up a hip? Are they going down for a shot block? Or are they uh, set and stable? Okay, that's your hockey homework for the week. So press pause on this video, go do that, and then come back because as you know, your answer key and my opinions on that are coming up right now. All right, here we go. Nicholas Listrom, best shutdown defenseman ever, according to this YouTube video. So again, we're watching for his footwork as he makes, most of the time they're brilliant plays with his stick. So there's a nice poke check. He's got his stick back, not extended so that he can extend it when he needs to and react. But again, we're watching his footwork. Look how his feet are set and stable, right, as he makes that poke check. He's not crossing, he's not opening up, he's not going down for a shot block. He's staying very still, very stable with his feet, and that allows him to make the great play with his stick. So the first one, feet are set and very stable. Here we go, another one on the way back. Okay, this one's not so much him playing from backwards, he's just kind of back checking and chasing. So nice stick work. It doesn't really count for uh, what we're looking at, right? Where I want to look at situations where he's backing up. This one counts. He's chasing, but as he turns, notice how he turns and squares up his feet. And they're set and stable. And then he's able to use his stick, right? So he turns, set, stable. There's no cross. There's no open hip commitment, no shot block commitment. Okay, the feet turn, set, and stable. So two in a row there where his feet are set. Okay, another one here. Again, look at the feet, look at the feet, look at the feet. No crossover at all, no open hip commitment. All right, as he's going back, he's very calm. He's able to push over, change his lanes a little bit, to close his gap a little bit without crossing his feet. Okay, so that's three in a row where the feet are set and stable without panicking. Let's look at Nicholas Lich from the goaltender. Before we do that, that, we're gonna zip on over to last week's, the one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna take a look at the difference, okay? Watch the, the final defender here, opening up his hip, forward striding to try to throw the hit, okay? And, and, and completely committing, right? We didn't see Lidstrom committing at all. We saw him uh, calm with his feet so that he could make a play with his stick. There's a crossover commitment by the defender, right? There's a like a like a, a body check commitment. It just seems like on these plays where D are getting beat or destroyed, they're kind of you know committing completely. Like look at that, committing to the slide, and then you don't have the option after that to change or to recover really, right? Committing there to that crossover and hit. Okay, scrambling your feet, crossing one way, crossing the other way. Watch this D in the back here. He's crossing over one way. He's trying to get speed. Now he's crossing over the other way a couple times, cross the third way, and all those crossovers have him completely committed and he's and he's done. So as we zip back here, we're gonna see lids from the goaltender. These ones aren't so much, uh, they don't really apply as much to what we're talking about. So as he's kind of making some, some nice goaltender saves and shot blocks and clears, um, I'm just gonna remind you, as we go back and see some more of his plays, even though sometimes he will open his hip, sometimes he will go for the hit or he will drop for the shot block, uh, notice that he never seems like he's fully committed to it. He always seems like even though he's down, when they try a move, he's ready. He's ready to react. So so none of it is out of uh, full commitment. All right, so I'm going to skip ahead here past most of these shot blocks. There we go. There we go. 
stick work. Right? So even though he is going to drop down here to block the passing lane, once the pass isn't made and he commits to trying to deke the forward there, he's able to then respond with his stick. So he does open his hip, but when the slip comes, boom, he's able to react with his stick. Right? Here he's just calm, calm, calm with the feet. So we'll go back to those three again. Right? First of all, he's not crossing over on this play. His partner is, but he's not. He's using his pushes to change his lanes stick down to block, and he's ready to make his movement, right? Stick lift, lizard tongue, we call that poke. Okay, he does open his hip, but he's not fully committed, outstretching, reaching, committing. He's waiting and, and, and watching what the next play is to react to it. Okay, so you can definitely categorize that one as open hip. Remember, we're categorizing it according to crossing over, open hip, right, or keeping the feet stable. Or, or shot blocking or going for a check. We go back to this one here, okay? And what you see is, okay, he's poke checking, but feet are set, feet are stable. And then he misses there. And then he comes through again, he goes for stick lift. So he does eventually open the hip, but again, it's not out of like such a, such a full commitment. Um, maybe he's gonna get a penalty in today's NHL doing that. Same thing here, couple poke checks. So that's a shot block, that one. Shot block uh, uh, positioning, okay? But you notice, he gets up and he and he's ready to make a stick check right after that. It's not like a full commitment. He's always seems to be, of course, we picked out the clips um, that he's succeeding on, but always seems ready for that next play. Here's another similar one, right? So he does open his hip. This one goes under open hip. But as the slip comes, he's waiting for it, and he's able to react with his stick. Okay, similar one there. Now this one I love because the forward does a good job kind of speed changing at the line, punching up. And a lot of the times the D then backs up really far and the gap opens, but he's able to kind of slow down himself, put his stick in a great stick on puck position. He does that all with no crossing, no like extra footwork. Okay, similar one there, now from forward, so it doesn't apply as much. All right, young Jamie Ben going inside out. So this one, he definitely does a cross. Okay, but again, he doesn't look like he's fully like committed. I think here, if Ben tries to come back against the grain, right, like he went inside out, if he tries to then cut back, he's going to get hit here. The positioning on this was pretty good. He might get, I think he might get blown wide here if uh, Ben's able to stop that stick check. Comment below if you think that stick check, or send me a message if you think that's a penalty right there in, in today's NHL. There's just a nice bat out of the air. Okay, this one here, as I talked about, when the cutback comes, you see plays like this all the time where the first move to the side causes the defender to turn his back and turn his head uh, so that this other next move right there ends up you know, destroying them and walking right through. But on this play, again, he, he shows kind of very calm feet and the fact that he's not fully, like he's beat here, right? He's beat, but he kind of spins, plants his feet, and then now he's watching for either the puck or he's watching where he can lift a stick or smack a stick out of the way, and he recovers from a position where he was kind of dead, okay? There's a shot block position, this one right here, shot block position, but again, he's ready. He never looks fully committed. It's crazy. It's super elite. Some people, of course, call him the best D to ever play, best defensive defenseman to ever play. So I think personally the biggest thing here to realize is, you know, well, A, start watching when guys get dangled, when you're watching hockey and you see someone make a great move. Watch the footwork of the D uh, as well as the level of commitment, okay? Does it look like they completely tried to commit to that hit or, or, or turning and chasing? Um, but ultimately, how are you going to be able to do that? You need to really work on your skating. Your skating needs to be super elite. You need to understand lateral steps. You need to be able to push backwards, open hip, scooter push, do all these skating techniques where you're going to be able to, uh, you know, be so comfortable with them that you can be ready and alert and, and not feel that your speed differential is, is so weak that you're always trying to chase or catch up. So it's, it's really important to, you know, Get yourself into the proper gap by being up. Then there's not a speed differential against you. Get yourself into the proper lane. Um, and those things come from the, a lot of stuff we were talking about this week with the one-on-ones. And once you're there, 
make sure your skating is good enough for those micro adjustments, little pushes, all the things I mentioned, and be able to be ready to react and, and play with your stick. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Remember to subscribe. Remember to check in each week when we go through these clips and, uh, and try to help you guys analyze and understand a little bit more about what's going on at the highest level of the game.